Hello everybody, it's D Loaded here. In this episode of Building Tutorial, we are going to cover walls and towers. I'm going to show you a very simple tower design in three easy steps behind me. I'm going to show you a wall design that you can use to connect these towers, and then I'll show you how to make a small gate. So there are many different sizes and shapes of towers. This tower that I'm going to show you today is kind of a smaller tower. It's more of a uh, a watchtower or something that you would have, you know, something that you're planning to build 10 of these or 15 of these stretching around a wall. So you need the tower to be fast, somewhat low effort, somewhat cheap in terms of materials. But you also need it to have a decent shape and, uh, you know, look good. So the first step of making this tower is the foundation. So you can grab any type of blocks you want. You could make this out of andesite, sandstone, anything you want. But I'm going to be using just normal stone and andesite for the purposes of this demo. Let me zip over here. So because the tower is a round tower, the foundation is going to be like this. So you have one, two, three, and then the corner is particularly interesting. You do one, two, one, like that. So kind of a sharp corner. You could do this, but that makes it look kind of like an octagon. You have to give it that sharp corner so that it looks circular. That's a lot of um, that's a mistake a lot of people will fall into when they're trying to make circles. They'll actually make the make the uh, you know the corner part of the circle just a little bit too little bit too diagonal and it ends up looking like an octagon. So we're going to be avoiding that issue. So there's the foundation. This is step one. Next thing you want to do is you want to take some type of wooden planks. You could be oak, spruce, it really doesn't matter. And you go ahead and put in the floor. Okay. The next step is that you're going to want a little staircase to get up here. There we go. Something like that. Or if you want to be a little bit more minimalist, you could do that. Let's go ahead and pull out the stone brick. We're also going to need stone brick walls. So here we are, step one is finished. If you look over there, that is step two. We're just making an inner ring, a second ring set back one block from the foundation and it is going to be four blocks tall. Remember to throw in some block variation. Because this is a very simple shape, block variation is important to help it not look too basic. So there you go. Okay, step two is finished. Now, how do we proceed? How do we make this little... Uh, skinny part in the abdomen section of the tower. How do we do that? Well, because this is 1.19, we actually have a lot more options opened up to us by the fact that we now have stone brick walls. Unfortunately, if you're on 1.12, this tower design just doesn't work. Um, the walls don't connect 
cleanly like that. There's a little tiny gap there in 1.12, so unfortunately this design is just straight up not possible in uh, older versions of the game. So you want to take the walls and you want to go around in a circle like this. Three blocks tall. And fill in this. There you go. Throw in some block variation here. Those are going to be windows. I could toggle the Okay, there you go. Reference back to the finished model. We need one more layer, one more level of stone. You could also incorporate cracked stone brick if you want. Cracked stone brick is pretty easy to make. You just smelt stone brick one additional time in the furnace and it creates cracked stone brick. adds a little bit of age to the tower that we may not have had before. Before we move up to the roof, let's go ahead and just do the inside of the tower. So here we go. Level one. Okay. You're going to want to light this up a little bit. Add this little decorative arch on the inside. It looks kind of nice. And then I need a torch. This is actually small enough that you can pretty much get away with just one torch on each level. So How do we do the ramparts? Well, you can see that the ramparts actually overhang the rest of the tower. However, the circle at the top of ramparts is not actually wider than the circle at the bottom for the foundation. So the tower is in a way kind of hourglass shaped. The top mirrors the bottom. And that is a very deliberate design choice it makes your tower look um, clean, efficient, and it gives it a very balanced shape. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create this lip by placing two stone brick stairs on the face of the tower like this. Then the rest, we go around with slabs like that, like so. One more right here, okay. Cobblestone. Give it some block variation. Okay, there you go. Next step, 
but the fence is on top of this. Each crenellation gets its own fence. All right. The final step, and this is probably the hardest part, is the roof itself. And you actually don't have to do that, by the way. Um, if you don't like the pointy roof, you just leave it open. Uh, there's no reason why you can't. But for this demonstration, I will show you how to make the roof because I know people are always asking for roof tutorials and stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty important to know how to do this. It definitely does take the tower from being somewhat plain to actually looking pretty good. Like the, the roof definitely adds a lot to the tower. You can tell just by comparing, you know, version that has the roof versus no roof. Roof really, really makes it look a lot better. So let's go ahead and just demonstrate that. So you want to take dark oak in this case. Here we go. Just laying down a layer of solid blocks here. Comment below if you know why it rains so frequently in 1.19. Okay, so now that we have this foundational level of blocks, we're gonna go around the perimeter with stairs, like so. And of course, to get the corner stair, you aim at this portion of the stair, there you go, like that. Okay, aim right there again. This is much harder in survival mode. I can show you, generally speaking, how this will look if you're doing it in survival. This is how it will look. Again, mashing down the shift key so that I don't fall. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot slower in survival, but yeah, that's how you would do it. And then, okay, what do, what do we do from here? Well, the first two levels of the tower go up by, of the tower roof, go up by one block. And then it transitions into going up by two every single time. So that gives it this curve that is not totally, it's, it's not a straight diagonal line all the way up, it's a curve. It's subtle, it's very subtle. How do you do that? Well, obviously the second layer, we have to go up by one block. So here we go, like that. Okay. Now I left a gap here and that's because I'd like to put a solid block in the center. And I think that helps it with the transition a little bit. Technically that's incorrect. Technically that's incorrect, but I do it every single time anyway because it looks good. And that's ultimately what matters, is just if it looks good. So, yeah, we're going to be filling this in. Now we're going up by two, so we're pulling out the solid blocks. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. 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 And then... doing the same thing over and over again on each layer till we get to the top. This is the top and we do fence, 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 one, two, trap doors. 
and then two fences on top. There you go. I know I did that pretty fast, uh, but you can kind of rewind, watch it a couple times, pause it if you need to to catch up. But that is how you do it. Three easy stages to create this tower. So now that we have this tower, let's kind of put it into action, okay? Let's kind of demonstrate how would you use this tower in a network of fortifications, which is what basically is what you're doing. When you're building walls around your city, you shouldn't purely think of them as walls. It's a network of fortifications. So not every area will actually need a full wall. Especially if the terrain is uneven, if you're on an island, for instance, if there's a river, the wall doesn't have to be extremely high on the bank of a river. You can just wall up the bank a little bit, enough that players wouldn't be able to climb over. And that'll look, it'll look good. And let's face it, walls in Minecraft aren't really for functional purposes anyways. Um, so, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about with that in a second. Let me copy this. And I can demonstrate on uh, the small town I made over here. I will kind of make a wall around this and show you how you can use these towers. Okay, so... Second position. Okay, let's go ahead and ro rotate it. So by the way, when you rotate, it rotates it to your right. If you just do rotate 90, it's going to rotate over there. Let's do it one more time. Let's rotate one more time. So now it'll be like that. Okay. So, um, let's try pasting this. Okay. That, that looks okay. This is the road. Let's measure really fast. One, two, four, five, okay. Oh no, I skipped two right there. That's fine. Okay, so right here is where I need to paste the second one so that they're equally spaced. And there you go. It did fuck up the road a little bit. Let's fix that really fast. So, two of these towers flanking either side of the road. Now what can we do for the gate? Something like this. See that so far? Following so far? This shape, so pillar, 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 three blocks in the middle, one on each side. There we go. Let's pull out. Um, we could just do smooth stone. Let's use that. Fill 
this in. Okay. Like that. want to leave your city open you can just leave it like that or we can do doors oh nope that's wrong no it's not it's not wrong so hold down shift Well, shit. <laughs> that doesn't look right. Okay. Yeah, trapdoors are tricky. This method is a little bit tricky. Let's just put one up there. Okay. There you go. There's your wooden wooden door. Wooden gate. It's not perfect. You might want to actually just go all the way up like that. fact, I, I guess I will. There you go. Very tall gate, but good enough, right? Let's put the doors on here. You are going to need a separate ladder for this um, because of the way I designed it. Uh, if you try to mine into the tower here, you just basically can't do it. It doesn't work. It's not at the right level. So you're gonna need you're gonna need to put a ladder. And then let's grab this again and this again. And let's add a bit of fortification onto this gate. Upside down stairs, across the top like this, and as always, we're doing uh, the fences over the top, stone brick fences. Check this out. This is why we did the gap, the upside down staircase. Shoot arrows through. That is a firing angle that you would have never been able to get if this were a solid block. That's called a murder hole. It's a real piece of technology that medieval architects would use on castles and walls and stuff. Gives just that extra layer of defense. The other thing that you want probably to add on here is some type of railing. You could just do fences if you want to keep the dark oak theme. A little gap right there. Something like that. Or if you're going for the all stone look, you can just do like this or whatever. And the purpose of that is so that if you're standing right here and you get shot, or you're standing right here and you get shot, you don't get knocked off. You don't get, you don't get knocked off. That's the idea. He's getting knocked off and falling to your death. It's no fun. Yeah, so that's that. You can also, if you want, you can kind of do the roof across the top of this too. If you feel particularly compelled So, this is not going to line up perfectly because 
we did the overhang on this side, but we didn't do it on this side. That can easily be fixed, of course. Let's mix it up. Let's do something like that. course we need to add these little supports and there you go very realistic looking this is a very realistic looking gate there you go simple this is pretty fast even if you're in survival mode this isn't going to take you more than a couple hours to do So let's, I don't think I'm going to do the whole wall around this city, but let me just demonstrate a couple other things to you really fast about how you should use these towers, how you should think about connecting the terrain, everything like that. So let's paste another tower in um, right here, perhaps. And then let's connect it with a wall. So I'm kind of just eyeballing this. Looks pretty good. We may want to make this section a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, it's good enough. And then we may want to come around here and do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then we transition to going one block, one block diagonal. Okay, and then as it curves, we're gonna transition back to two blocks, and then three blocks, and then four, and then let's just go to the straight. And then you put another tower right there probably, so that they're equally spaced out. You can see the outline of this wall is starting to take shape. Now, because this tower is kind of small, I mean, it's it's getting the job done. That's It's doing what it needs to do. I've never been a fan of massive scale. I think this is a very realistic scale for a tower. So the walls don't need to be that big. I mean, the walls should be probably half the height of the tower. So the walls are probably going to be about as tall as this gatehouse is. Let's pull out the cobblestone and let's do simple stone and cobblestone combination. Let's go like, let's also get some andesite to show that you can use andesite if you want. At the end of the day, walls don't need to actually be that detailed. The focus of your city needs to be magnificent builds inside the city and not necessarily the walls themselves. Also, you need to bear in mind that everything you do is just contributing to the image of your entire city. We're not building one tower or one house or one wall we're building a network of connected towers and walls so you shouldn't think about each tower as a separate build each wall as a separate build you should think about it as how will this wall design work with everything else i'm doing and obviously um, having some wall even if it's not pretty or perfect is better than having no wall. So this wall is going to be pretty simplistic, but it really doesn't matter. It's going to get the job done. It's cheap, it's fast, it'll look 
better than nothing. And, you know, mission accomplished, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so, five blocks tall. Good enough. I mean... Looking at this from a distance, that looks pretty realistic. That looks pretty cool. Let's go up one more block. Let's just do... Let's just go up one more block. So that it's uh, uniform with this edge right there. Okay, there we go. So what do we do to make this look, you know, like an actual wall? Well, I think we need to carry over this foundation layer that we have on the towers across the wall. So let's go ahead and pull out the cobblestone slabs and the stairs. And let's get gravel out as well. Gravel is pretty useful in these situations. So let's go across the base of this and just create this foundation level. Let's make it two blocks tall, but it doesn't have to be perfectly consistent across the whole length of the tower here. Okay, there we go. So foundation layer, what's next? Ramparts, you guessed it. Every tower needs battlements. So let's go ahead and throw some on this tower as well. The standard method, of course, is to have them overhang a little bit, which is what I'm doing. Then let's pull cobblestone fence out, just for the sake of having some variety. Just kind of randomly put a couple in there. Not a big deal. There you go. So remember how plain and basic that wall looked to begin with? Well, because of the block variation, that we did, and because we added the foundation level and we added a ramparts level, we added a um, crenellations on the top, okay? It's looking pretty good, honestly. I mean, it's it is somewhat it's somewhat basic, but it's a very realistic wall. Um, it it fits the same style and theme as the towers. It's fine. It's it's a perfectly functional wall, and yeah, I mean. You know, you're not going to be able to jump over this or anything. Uh, yeah, so, and do walls really have defensive value in Minecraft? Is there really a point to walls in Minecraft? Not really. No, not really. But you want you want your city to look nice, and you want your city to look somewhat realistic. So it's worth adding some walls. So the outside layer of the walls, it's worth noting, does not have to be the same as the inside layer. Or the inside face, I should say. Um, one of the problems that this wall has right now, of course, is because it's only one block thick, there is very little space to walk. So how do we fix that? Well, we can add additional wooden walkway kind of attached to the back of the wall. And we see that a lot in medieval... on real medieval walls. A lot of them were actually not as thick as you might think. And so they had to add kind of wooden supports and, and things like that on the back of the wall to just allow soldiers to walk more easily. So let's do that. And then let's also pull out the ultimate 
builder's cheat code, which is leaves. So let's kind of go across the top, randomly placing blocks. And then go for a layer of this. And I know that this is somewhat inconsistent because over here we use dark oak. But uh, I'm doing spruce because I, I think... I'm just trying to show you that you can get away with spruce. And we did use spruce on the inside in here, so it's not that crazy. And then let's put little fences here. These are just little supports. Little support pillar. Okay. Now, the bushes. Now, because the bottom of this wall is quite plain, we're going to add a lot of bushes. Go over a base layer like this, and then kind of randomly add additional bushes here. It can be quite thick. You'll notice as well that if there is a fence right here, I always try to bring the bushes up to meet the fence. You don't always have to do it, but it does like... It, it makes that support look somewhat logical in a weird way. Yeah, okay, there you go, right? So now if you're walking around inside the city, the main thing you're going to be looking at is the buildings, but if you happen to see the wall, eh, it looks good. It's good enough, right? It's good enough. It's doing its job. It looks all right. The bushes look nice, very friendly, very inviting. You're also going to need a way up, of course. Um, so let's just put that in there. There you go. Not a big deal. Now, the reason that we have to do that, of course, is that, again, the tower is not perfectly aligned with the wall, but not a big deal. So that's one type of wall, and this is kind of a um, fast, dirty type of wall. That's um, one of my favorite kinds of walls, actually, is this this design, because it, it is very basic but it's also incredibly fast, and I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. This is pretty cheap when it comes to resources. It's not a very expensive wall to make, and if you're just making a small little town or trying to just fortify the edges of your town a little bit, it's a perfect, perfectly valid design, a perfectly good design to go with. Now, I did say that not every section of your city might need a wall. And let me kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So let's pull out some terraforming tools really quickly, and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, shit. That's not what I wanted to do. It gave me... Uh, it didn't give me grass blocks. It gave me grass... Wow, brilliant, great, <laughs> okay. Thanks, world edit, okay. Let's say there's a hill, a big ass hill, or a cliff, maybe this is the edge of Maybe your city is located on a mountain or the very top of a hill or something. And you just have this big hill. And let's say that this goes on for, you know, an ar arbitrary distance, okay? You don't need to completely wall. Hold on, brush, sphere. Hold on, brush. Smooth out the top of that so it looks a little bit more natural. Okay. Now look at this. You don't need the wall to be as high because 
of this hill. And you also run into a problem, of course, of like, how do you make the walls still look okay when you're going over this weird hill? How do, you, how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, the best way to do it is with what I call a land extension. And what is a land extension? Well, a land extension is basically um, drawing an arbitrary line and saying that everything from here back is going to be flat grass. Everything from here forward is going to be leveled out. So that was a horrible way of describing it. Let me kind of demonstrate to you what I'm talking about. So this is the hill, right? So I'm going to demonstrate this with world edit just to speed things up. But you, you go here. You go all the way over here. Okay. You just take your shovel, you flatten this down. And we probably going to flatten we're probably going to need to flatten this off a little bit as well. So let's go over here set 0. Okay. That's a lot better. That's a lot better. Let's pull up this as well. Okay. And you're going to fill this in. This is like an embankment. You may be asking, why are you using cobblestone and smooth stone for this instead of stone brick? And there's a very simple reason for that. I consider stone brick to be a more expensive material. That's kind of a weird way of thinking about it. What do you mean more expensive? Obviously, if you're in creative mode, it doesn't matter. There's no cost to anything. But if you were in survival, I mean, what's easier to get? Cobblestone, smooth stone, andesite, or stone brick? Stone brick is, is moderately more difficult to get. You have to go through several steps of crafting. If you don't have silk touch, you're going to need to smelt all of your cobblestone. So, in my mind, that means that cobblestone is an inherently cheaper material. And when you're just making a wall like this, a low wall, an embankment, or a small type of wall such as that, stone brick doesn't matter very much. Now the towers, I think, are a little bit higher effort. Um, the purpose of the towers is where the real, I mean, the towers are where the real defensive power comes from. Archers get up in those towers, they have much longer range, they can do a lot more damage. So the towers are the real danger points for any enemy trying to attack your city. So those are stronger. Those are made of, of stone brick. You could make that tower design out of cobblestone if you wanted to. It, it would just look a little bit weird. But yeah, just for the the filler material, the wall filler material of the wall, cobblestone is fine. Stone is fine. I would argue not to do, you know, 100% pure cobble. I would argue you need to mix in some andesite or some stone or something. But yeah. Okay, so here we go. We've got this little embankment. As it turns, we just follow the curve of the hill. So kind of cut down into this a little bit. Cut in here a little bit. Let's go over slightly. Okay. All looking pretty normal so far. And let's go over here.
Alright, so there you go. A land extension. Now let's fill in the, a little bit of grass here just to make sure it's all flush. If you're in a natural, very hilly environment, you're going to find yourself doing this a lot. Too much, probably. Um, sometimes it's easier just to do this than it is to actually make walls. So, yeah, be that what you will. So you level this off. You can also use this method to, like, create more land, so to speak, where there originally was none. So, let's say I want to make more space. Well, shit. I did it again. There we go. Not used to, not used to 1.18. So there you go. See what I mean? Just arbitrarily make a box. Now you have more building space. Um, it does look a little bit weird right there, but you get what I'm trying to say. You get what I'm trying to do. Let's just undo that. Let's just undo that a couple times. Oh no, 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 undo, 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 undo. Yeah. So you kind of get what I'm trying to say. And then ramparts, obviously we have to do that again. What you gotta understand about building this type of thing is that everything starts with a very basic idea. Like that wall over there, you remember the first time I laid it down just a few minutes ago and it was completely flat, very uninteresting. And all I had to do was add a foundation, add some uh, crenellations at the top and suddenly it actually looks good. Everything is about putting a basic shape down and then layering details after the fact, basically. So there's nothing wrong with a simplistic shape or simplistic design as long as it's functional. This design is cheap to make. It doesn't take very long to make. Uh, it's, you know, it's very functional. It, it gets the job done and it looks good. There's no reason not to do it. So uh, because this wall is not as high as that one, I'm not going to do the foundation layer. I'm just going to go straight to bushes and I'm going to put bushes right here on the outside of the wall. 
just to show you that you can basically like, there are options here you might want to put a moat in front of this as well since the wall isn't very tall just to add some extra defensive value you notice I'm actually clicking like 15,000 times because holding down the mouse button it does not place blocks at the same speed as your Minecraft character is capable of flying or walking. If I were walking, it would be kind of like this. I got a new mouse that has ridiculous sensitivity and I'm very uh, wigged out by that. So yeah, there's a land extension. And since all the land up here is actually flattened, it's perfect to put houses up here put a, you could put a castle on top of this you could do whatever you wanted and in fact I think you probably should put a castle on top of this because it's probably gonna need it so let's put an additional tower let's put a tower and there's the tower you can actually just straight up put the tower on top of the land extension like that. No reason why you shouldn't. Now it is a little bit inconsistent because of course um, this tower is now substantially taller than those. You might want to go ahead and just put the tower on level with the rest of the, the land extension, but it's all up to you. It really doesn't matter too, too much. It's just a little bit of a uh, it does make the town look a little bit weird if all of the tower roofs on the wall are not lined up at around the same height. But yeah, I mean, just to show you that you could, you totally could. You totally could. There's nothing stopping you. So yeah. And then let's say that the hill kind of trails off that way, but you need the wall to go this way. Just break it off, right? Get up here, be like, okay, I want, I want the wall to go this way. So, there you go, wall goes that way now. And you could even reintroduce the foundation layer that I was talking about, if you think it needs it. Although maybe not that high. Something like that. See how that connects? Totally fine. All of that is totally functional. So, um, what about more complicated wall designs? Well, what if you want the wall to be extra powerful? What if the wall is gonna be a little bit taller, needs to be a little bit more strong? Well, and what other kinds of details can you put on the wall? that are basic, easy to repeat a million times. Okay, well, you, you're probably thinking what I'm thinking, arches. Here you go. Let's do a three block wide arch pattern on the inside of this wall. Just to demonstrate that that is a totally viable technique. And if you feel so compelled, then you should do so. Uh, 
god, there's so many blocks in the game now. There you go. So there's that. Now you can always do this right here if you're worried about people falling off. Or you can do this. So if you if you notice all three of these different wall types, it's basically taking the same general premise and applying different extras onto it as like add-ons, right? The way I build is I take, I, I just mix and match different techniques. I know that, hey, this method worked pretty good on this type of building, this wall looked pretty good over here. Let's recycle design elements from it add a few extra things, let's add an archway, let's add a little wooden walkway extension on it, let's add uh, different types of ramparts, What? let's add uh, the murder holes from earlier, right? Remember I demonstrated the murder holes over there on the gate? Uh, you can do that design on, on this type of wall as well. Let me show you how to do it. It's exactly the same as, uh, is it, it's exactly the same as you might expect, so the one thing about this, of course, is you do have to make sure that the support stair is directly underneath the pillar, but like, here you go. This is totally valid. You can do this too if you want. There you go, right? I usually only do that on uh, very specific places, so towers, gates, things like that. I don't always do the murder holes. It doesn't look as solid. Like, if you look at that wall, it's very solid. No air, no light is getting through. It does look a little bit weird when you can just see up into the thing. But, I don't know. Some people, some people like it. You can also put trap doors there. Open, shoot, close. That's another very valid technique if you want the wall to have very extra defensive value and then of course put a little guard railing up there a little staircase going down there you go so many many different options depending on what the terrain calls for, depending on what kind of blocks we have available. There are many different wall options. You can mix and match, combine them to create a defensive network around your city. Let's go the extra mile here for a sec and let's actually just, let's put a moat. What would it look like with a moat? Brush. Fear air two. Let's do let's do that. Of course, uh, the world is not very deep, but this is a trench that you would have to dig, or you could use a river as a natural type of moat. It instantly spawned glow squids, which is interesting. So there's your moat, and then let's do a bridge over this.
Actually, that doesn't look very good. I mean, that's like the laziest moat in the history of moats, but whatever, man. Better than nothing. There's also a hole in that building, which I apparently made with World Edit on accident. So there you go, folks. This has been the wall and tower tutorial. I hope you learned something while watching this. I hope that I inspired you to try building, to try making towers and walls. It's not as complicated as it looks. It really isn't. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of Building Tutorial.